Hang on. Technical difficulties. <laughs> oh well. I'll keep recording. Come on. I always like this song. Hey, Joe. How you doing? Joe, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You hear me? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Hopefully, this is uh, this this is working live and in charge. And if it's not, then uh, you and I are just going to talk to nobody for the next uh, however long it is. Oh God. Oh, I'm sure it'll work out. Can you do me a favor? Can you speak up just a tad bit? Yeah. Let me turn on my mic a little bit. All right. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, is this is this better? That's better. That's better. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, let me do quick do the introduction. Um, welcome to uh, this, that, and the other. This is Mario. A good, uh, what is today? Thursday evening, December the 6th. Thank you, as always, to Michael Nighthawk, Painter, Mitchell, Willow. Happy 70-something birthday. Um, uh, Dr. Fetzer. <laughs> um, the model here is, I honestly don't know everything, but what I tell you honestly uh, is what I know. As you know, the last few um, weeks, well, actually, this is the third week, so the last two weeks, I've been on this slight, uh, let's call it an obsession with with Twitch, and I've reached out to somebody who is, uh, I define him as a uh, entry-level, mid-level streamer, and I reached out, and uh, Big Joe was kind enough to have some Twitter conversation with me. And he decided to come on the program this evening, and what we want to do is have a conversation about Twitch, and maybe it will delve into the political arena, because you, my friend, you and I both view politics slightly differently, but, but that's okay, right? Well, of course. Yeah, that's fine. If you could, do me a favor, introduce yourself to the uh, Freedom Slips Revolution Radio audience, who you are, what you do, and uh, that sort of stuff. Well, my name is Joe Lee. I do uh, internet, or at least I'm starting off doing a uh, internet uh, YouTube talk show called the Ed the Everyday Progressive Show, and it's also the same name on Twitch. I have a Twitch channel, with the same name, and um, the Twitch the Twitch uh, Twitch channel I started off maybe two months ago, but the one on YouTube I started about uh, back in January, I think. But I've just been Getting out the progressive, you know, what I think is the progressive message is being, um, being what I like, what I align, it's for your hands, still the point of getting out the message, trying to talk to people, strike conversations, even if they don't agree with me 100%, I'm just, you know, just trying to get the word out and talk to people about it. Good, thanks. So now, what, what people don't know is I, I, I define myself as a lurker, which is nothing more than saying somebody who, who lurks anonymously, uh, in Twitch streams, it's, it's no different than somebody listing themselves as just a guest here in the uh, Freedom Slips Studio B lobby or, or lobby for, for or the lobby rather, whether whether or not you're on Studio A or B um, is irrelevant. 
And when we talked uh, a couple days ago, one of the things I mentioned to you is that what I appreciate about you is, again, although you and I see things, I would say maybe 10 to 15 percent differently, you're authentic, man. I mean, I've seen some people ask you what I would define um, as, in some cases, trolling based questions, in some cases, uh, difficult questions. But you don't shy away from letting people know your position and you you stick to that, which which is admirable. <laughs> well, I'm glad I mean, someone. It, it is. It is. No, I'm saying I'm glad someone thinks so. But uh, yeah, because um, I say why not? I mean, all all ideas that people think should be presented, and all the ideas if if someone wants to can can challenge them based on you know whatever they're, they're looking to challenge them on. Like, like why not? Is what like like this is one guy right on you. He's another. He's a really big YouTube personality. He's um some of your uh, listeners may have heard of him. His name is Dave Rubin. He used to be with the Young Turks. Now he's switched over to uh, his other thing, his other group. He's totally, you know, totally turncoat. And the thing is, he talks about the free marketplace of ideas, except the thing is, I mean it. He doesn't. Um, I, I'm not sure if you heard of that guy before. Is he the dark-haired guy? Who's, I, I, I don't I, – no, no, not him. I, I don't know. I don't know who he is. Well, the guy the guy, the guy, guy that he has, um, like I say, is a pretty big guy. He used to be with the Young Turks, and uh, he – just switch sides. I, he did it. He did it for the money, obviously. But yeah. I mean, if he wants to do it for the money, <laughs> fine. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying that's just, that's just what he, that's just what he did. But he has people on his show like uh, other big names like Ben Shapiro, yeah, or Jordan Peterson. Um, yeah, yeah. He's even talked with I think uh, talked like I think he's um talked with Joe Rogan before too as well. Wait, is he the guy who had the one-on-one debate with Ben Shapiro? Um, or has he just been on the show? I might be confusing. I, you know, I, he, I, I'm sh- I'm horrible at names. I'm better at faces. Well, I mean, the other guy, you, you just look up the I think it's called the. God, I forget the name. It's like the Dave Rubin Report or something like that. But um, but, it, but he the guy the guy's pretty pretty famous on it. So he talks about this idea about the free marketplace of ideas, except that he is honestly kind of fake at it, you know, because he, as soon as you try to. And do some ideas that he is pretty much supported by his backers, financial backers, to, to not to not really promote. As soon as you try to present anything that might question that, he really just ignores it. But everything else, oh yeah, free marketplace money. Me on the other hand, I think that all ideas should be looked at, explored. What are the merits for it? Are there any are there any test examples? Is there any observational evidence on it? Is there Anyone else that's doing it, that we can sort of go off by that, see how that's going. So that's that's one of my uh, core tenets of how I approach any particular topic. But also, and also realizing that, do I know everything? No. Even though at times it may sound like I know a lot of things, or I'm very well versed, but I, do I know everything? No. It's just that is every, I learn every day. That that's what I think everybody else should try to do too. I mean, I think every I think it's safe to say that everyone knows. Well, let, let me restate that. I, I've I've always said of of myself that I know a little bit about a lot of stuff and other people know a little bit about a lot of stuff, but they also have specializations. Yeah. And I, I, I like what you said a little while ago regarding folks who you don't appreciate the fact that they drift away from the hard difficult questions. And I have more respect for people who are open to having their views challenged as opposed to simply um, pivoting, as they say, in in, in the debate world, in, in, in pivoting to a topic that has no relationship whatsoever to the question. I mean, I don't know if you watch CNN, but sometimes I, I find myself saying to people, look, this isn't CNN, so answer the question. <laughs> not, not, not that, you know, I could, I could put a lot of news stations, either center, middle, uh, uh, c- center, left or right in the, the category of that. But nothing is more frustrating for me than when you ask somebody a question and they drift off into, in, in, into no man's land. Um, Joe, on your um, uh, you define yourself as a progressive liberal. Is that correct? Well, that's a the, the general um, description, but I'm a bit more. I think I'm a bit more complicated than that. Say when it comes to social policies, like what people can smoke, drink, or what women can do with their bodies, pulling out of the wars, not being interventionist. You could say I'm 
on those things, right? You, see, you could say I'm libertarian-ish. Um, you could you could say I mean I understand some libertarians who might be listening right now might their heads might be exploded and you you have to be a pure libertarian <laughs> to be anything libertarian. Well, I'm just saying my position is not I am I try not to be a reactionary left wing person person. You know what I mean? I mean I try to be okay. Listen, I want to hear what you got to say. If it makes sense, great. Let's let's roll with it. Let's see how far we can go with it. If not, well, this is the reasons why what you said doesn't make sense or the the date the the data says says otherwise. And if they accept it, they accept it. If they don't, they don't. It's, it's their choice to do so. But that's that's just what I'm going to do. Uh, so, 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 so I want to get back to that, but just for, for the folks who are listening, we, and, and I've explained this the last few weeks, but uh, you're a legitimate Twitch streamer. So could you just explain um, as best you can to, to the listening audience what exactly Twitch is? Because I think some folks are still uninformed. They just view it as, oh, it's that uh, gaming website. Well, it, it, the content game, uh, gaming, uh, gaming streaming website is it, sort of accurate, but it, it's also they Twitch has recently expanded it into uh, people talking with their podcast shows or just chatting and um, uh, other other categories within their platform. But the idea is like, hey, if you get a decent internet connection, you got a microphone, and you got the broadcast. I use OB, you know, I use um, so free. I use a free uh, broadcasting software. But and yeah, something like that to where you can just start streaming. You can begin to reach people and get your voice out there if you want to. So I think of it like YouTube, except YouTube seems to be focused more on you know people who make videos, edit them, then upload them versus they're just now getting into the streaming aspect. So it's not YouTube really isn't as doesn't really have that much exposure for new streamers who are brand new versus if you go into Twitch and start doing it. So if you want to say begin to do it, then you could maybe start off on Twitch, then once you get a following there, then you can make your YouTube channel, and then your followers, of course, would probably follow you on your YouTube channel, and then you can grow it with, through a two-pronged two prong approach, grow it that way, but it's just a platform where anybody with a mic and a decent internet connection and can just broadcast their uh, whatever they want to whoever, whether it be games or politics or comedy or just other other topics but yeah it's it's really i think it's some, something worth checking out if that's something any of your listeners are uh into wanting wanting to do so so you started out on youtube yeah so what what made you maybe it was maybe it's maybe it's just a simple answer maybe it's just networking but what made you sit back one day and decide you know what i'm here on youtube let me go to this live streaming i, I suspect that you don't live stream over youtube or you do I do. Um, with my with my YouTube page, I probably stream there maybe because it's still small. I only have like 150 uh, 150 subscribers, so and I have the few usual people who come in. Hey, how you doing? We'll talk for a little bit, and um, so I stream that one about maybe once a week or so, something like that. Because if I stream on there every single day, the same people are going to come in is be kind of boring. But with Twitch. I stream a lot more. I stream almost every day at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And um, not every day because I do take breaks, but almost every day. So whenever I stream on Twitch, I seem to get a lot more a lot more traffic, a lot more activity. Because Twitch is mainly is, is absolutely focused on people who stream versus Twitch versus sorry, YouTube, which is focused on people who create content, upload it, and people just comment on it. But that's why I figured, hey, I want, to, I want to try to see how far I can go with this Twitch platform because I seem to get a lot more traffic, a lot more people peeking in, peeking out, lurking, hanging out for a little bit and leaving. So it seems to be a lot more exposure from Twitch. And if people like my Twitch channel, as I can tell them about, about my YouTube channel, then I've actually had a few people subscribe to my YouTube channel because they like what I was saying, like what liked what I was doing in my Twitch channel. So I'm using both platforms to sort of you know, promote, promote each other. So it just increased exposure. So, so let me ask you, so let me, let me ask you this. Um, one of the, uh, I, see, I, I don't want to make it sound as if I'm throwing Twitch under the bus, but well, maybe I am, but mm. uh, I, I will, we'll find out. Um, so a question for you is one of the things that I find at least most annoying about Twitch, and maybe this is just, a behind the scenes thing that me as a viewer or you as a streamer have no control over, but it's, it's, you know, the, 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 the level of 
I don't know if it's misogyny or it's just plain uh, the opposite. Women using their assets to gain to gain money. Because for for the folks don't know, could you explain the way in which the monetization works with Twitch? How you are essentially paid? Well, I'm just the thing is with Twitch, right? I've only been with it for two months, and it took me about a month of steady, not a hard, not a lot of hard work, but just steady, consistent work about a month to get affiliated. And I'm just now starting to have a couple subs, making a little bit of money that way. But because I'm new, I'm not going to make that much. The people you see with the girls and, you know, with all the cleavage, which, hey, by the way, I don't mind at all saying that. <laughs> and, you know, and so I see they, they've probably been on there for, for, for a lot longer than me. So, of course, if I say, if, hey, if girls want to do that to sell, to, you know, to um, – to offer their assets, as it were, uh -huh. to, 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 to attract a viewership. I mean, it's, hey, hey, it's a way for them to make money. They're not doing anything illegal or anything, anything irrehensible, uh, which, hey, if they want to do that, hey, good for them and good for me when I see it. So, you know, it's and money for them and happy for me, you know. <laughs> so what, what, is it, what does affiliation mean for those who, who aren't, aren't quite familiar with it? Uh, affiliate means, well, to be an affiliate, you have to have, have to meet three requirements. Because if you, anybody can start to be a Twitch streamer and do whatever, you're just unaffiliated, just the average person. But once you get to three concurrent viewers on average on your streams over a 30-day period, and you have more than 50 followers, as well as more than, say, I think it's oh, uh, more than 12 hours worth of of um, stream of streaming time within that okay. month, then you then you can. Then you get the notification shortly that hey you can apply for you know you can be now sign up fill out the rest of the tax information and such for to become an affiliate and boom you're an affiliate now your channel can get and receive bits the bits are just like the uh, Twitch currency like one bit is equal to one cent so if somebody okay. so if somebody watches an ad they can earn bits that way and then say hey Joe I really like to stream so someone the other day um, sent me thirty bits because of the of the equivalent of thirty cents. To me, because they liked the conversation I had with them, with the content and the topics that way, so they can reward streamers like me who engage the the audience, you know, with, through through that way. Also, people can do cash donations. People can also be some become subs. And I have two right now. As of now, I have two tier one subs. This is like four ninety nine a piece. After Twitch gets their cut, I get like two thirty two um, per subscriber, but. The subscribers also have perks themselves because they are subscribers. So when you become an affiliate, you do get them perks, and it really is worth it. And that's why I was just trying so hard, so quickly to get to that affiliate status. So of the of the of, of the, the, the tier one, the four ninety nine uh, streamers receive how much of that? I think when they're starting out, like me, I think it's a little bit less than half. But I think if it's a Twitch Prime, Twitch Prime sub, I think it's two dollars and fifty cents. I get. Okay. But if, it's, but if it's a regular, regular, regular sub, it's two thirty, two dollars and thirty-two cents. And the thing is, you have to, you know, get get your, get that get that dollar amount up to a hundred bucks over the hundred dollar hundred dollar threshold to at the end of I think it's end of that month or the end of that thirty days, then Twitch uh, pays pays out that pays out that money. So 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 what you're so if I hear you correctly, what you're saying is is every thirty days you are you are dispersed a check or money somehow, but that's solely based on uh, what the, the amount has to be over a hundred dollars. Right. You have to get to a hundred. I mean, I, I suppose it's for simplifying their uh, processing, their payments processing, but yeah, as soon as you get the hundred, a hundred dollar mark, then at the end of that month, boom, that Twitter pays out to your account that you have set up. So let me ask you this. So, so when, when you're, you're, you're sitting back and you're, and you're scrolling through Twitch and you're looking at, you know, this, that, and the other thing, and you've got, you know, young lady do, doing whatever she's doing and she's got, you know, I don't know, 250 viewers and X amount of subscribers. Then you got somebody playing, which appears to be one of the most popular games on Twitch, Fortnite. Um, mm -hmm. You say to yourself, hey, I want to do this. Was it what – what made you decide to choose the specific topic you chose, which is leaning more towards political conversations? Well, at first, when I started the channel on Twitch, it was just mainly just, I just wanted to see how far I'd go with it. It wasn't political-minded yet. I was just seeing how far I can go with it, how I, what I can do with it. And about maybe a few weeks ago, well, not a few, about a couple weeks ago, I decided, you know what? People seem to want to come in this room 
I talk about political stuff as well, so I figure, hey, I'm already in politics, so I'll just tra- I'll just transition this channel over to more politics, but it'll still be focused on gameplay as well. Um, to where it'll, because I just don't want to be just a straight up talk show radio. I also want to have games playing in the background for you know visual movement and entertainment that way. But when I first started off, it was just I was just you know, I wanted to try it out, see how it worked out, and I didn't at that time I had no idea that I wanted to make it political, but I just seen that I also noticed on Twitch that there there's some political rooms, but there's not that many. But there's like a million other rooms that are just, hey, watch me play Minecraft or watch me play Fortnite and it's well, okay, you know, I want to do something that stands out from that to to you know to to start, you know, you know, being different, standing out from the rest of everybody else. So if you hey, I'm also make this a political room too. So just for a goof about maybe two weeks ago or so I decided to change my room title to, um, you know, debate a progressive liberal, just just to see if anybody would even come in my room and even you know, um, you know, even come come into my room, yell at me, call me a communist, and leave. You know, just I did I did it just for you know, just just for, were you just, just, to, just for kicks. Were you trying to troll the viewers? Is, is, uh, is, is, was that the purpose of your? I mean, well, look, I commend you. I, I would have, <laughs> like I said, you know, you you you, you know, as. Uh, as Alec Baldwin said in the in the great movie Glenn Glenn, Glenn Gary Glenn Ross, Glenn Ross, you know what it takes? It takes a set of brass balls, and that's yeah. what it took for you to because you are opening up the floodgates, right, for just a a, a crapload of folks to come in and throw every talking point at you and then just leave which i suspect may have happened a number of times well it, it, it has happened a little bit but not to the degree that i thought it would maybe because my channel is so small and so far to the bottom of the list that people don't really notice it but the thing is is it kind of trolling or a little bit um what, what do you what do you call like um what, what can i what, what, what phrases i'm looking for well God, something i just know it as trolling I don't, I don't know what i don't yeah i don't know I'm not versed in the in the on language, uh, Twitch language. No, I, this the the phrase the phrase escapes me. But if you say trolling, I, you know, you can call, you feel, but I also call it like a more of a clever marketing technique because yeah. it gets people who are politically charged come into the room and talk to me. And hopefully, some of the people that do come into the room that are politically minded realize, hey, this guy, even though he's a little bit progressive, he's not just some you know some left wing reactionary who's going to kick me out for saying something that he doesn't like. I mean, I pretty much put in my chat room pretty much allow everything speech-wise except for threats of violence, uh, threats of violence towards others, and doxing. Everything else is pretty much hey, have at it, you know. I mean, if now if Twitch says now Twitch, Twitch steps in one day and say hey, you got to cut out your people saying certain stuff, and hey, I got no choice. Twitch is making me do it. But other than that, I try to keep it as free speech as possible because I'm a huge free speech advocate, and. I try to stick to that as best as I can. I mean, if someone comes in and calls me a filthy communist, uh, this, that, and the other, hey, yeah, hey, that's your opinion, man. You got the you know, thing to back that up. So I mean, let me ask you this. Uh, go ahead, sorry. No, I'm sorry. Now I was, I was about to finish to say, you know, I try to try to take the conversation from there, see if they keep biting at the, uh, you know, the bait. No. So uh, other than I, okay, so so I. I I haven't looked at the um, terms of, of service for Twitch, but I presume, right, the obvious things uh, can't be can't be stated in rooms. You know, uh, you know, physical threats of violence, nudity, et cetera. But do you ever fear, as a strong proponent of free speech, that Twitch would ever crack down the way in which, let's say, Twitter or Facebook have, where the allegation is that they censor specific people solely based on their political um, uh, positioning. Well, what happened with uh, Twitch and Twitch and Facebook is that mostly, well, like I said, the name, the big names that it's happened to Alex Jones and um, God, who was the other guy that, that um, did that too as well? But mainly Alex Jones, right? The right. pro- problem is two things. One, what the, the people have to realize is that these platforms are private companies, and private companies can do whatever they want. And strangely enough, people on the right wing are advocates of, hey, if they're a private company, they can do whatever they want. But as soon as, as, soon as something like Twitter, like Twitter does goes against Alex Jones, says, hey, you, you violate term service, we, we got to kick you off. And be honest, they've given him many, many, many opportunities and warnings to cut off, to cut out, to cut out his more, uh, I'd say, 
violence and inducing speech, you know, ratcheting people up. And they warned him many times. So as a private company, they had the right to release legally as of now to do what they want. So, of course, people like Alice Jones or, you know, oh, my God, they're violating my freedom of speech, even though Twitter and Facebook are not government, but no, they're not government, you know, agencies. And because of that, they can pretty much do whatever they want. Now, don't get me wrong. As I, me as a progressive, should there be like an Internet Bill of Rights and a due process, even for private companies? I think that should be considered. But if people on the right wing are going to adhere to this, you know, free market principle of companies can do whatever they want and serve whoever they want, well, you know, Twitch, Twitch according to them rules, Twitch did exactly what, what their ideology suggests. And I mean, that's just how I see it. So, so let me ask you this, and I'll, I'll just push back slightly. So, I've read some of the tweets from uh, the, the 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 famed actress Alyssa Milano. I talked about her last week. In some of the tweets that she has directed at um, the the president, are 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 quite vulgar. But I don't see the the censoring from Twitter. Thanks, to there of what Twitter may consider a, a, as uh, right, conservative, et cetera. I mean, I, I, it, it, is it safe for me to say that there is a level of um, hypocrisy? Well, the thing is, again, I mean, as far as you want, if you want to talk about equal and fair treatment, you can say that like, some people are going to get, seem to get preferential treatment. And I think that, I mean, it depends on what you said. I'm not, I mean, I kind of, I'm kind of aware of that she did make some posts, but I don't know exactly what they were. But even then, again, Twitch is a private company. Or as of, according not to law, they can do what if they, if they say, if they say, hey, you were kicking off the service and we don't got to give you reason, they can do it because, because, um, you know, that's just a private company. They can do whatever they want. But, I mean, as, 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 no, as I got you. You know what I mean? But, but is it fair? No. I think there should be an Internet Bill of Rights. I think people should have due process. And, you know, that, that that's just something that should be explored. I'm, I'm definitely for that idea. But yet, but the reality is at the moment, they're, they're kind of exercising their, their legal right. Is it? And I don't want anybody to be silenced just for being right wing or even extreme right wing. If they want to come on, have a platform, talk with other people. You know, get their get their beliefs out, get their positions out. Fine, I'm for that. I don't want to silence anybody on the right. You know, I don't want anybody on the side of the right to be silenced. You know, it's because the moment that happens, then people like me, even though we may benefit us lefties may benefit that from you know right now, it, it'll end up biting us in the butt because one of these days maybe because that's a slippery slope and that's that's a slope we shouldn't go down. And but but you know, then again. Twitter's a private company; they can do it. If it was a, if it was a government agency, yes, then that'd be different. But they're not. You know, one thing one thing that I noticed is that people, and I, and I think it's safe for me to say this 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 is the category. I'm talking about the category of people who who fall in the extreme ends of 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 each by each I mean Democrat Republican political affiliation, where they go from zero to uh, uh, eighty. In about uh, uh, a nanosecond, and, and I, I'm, I'm comfortable using the phrase "bad shit crazy" uh, uh, with anybody, even even on, even during this show. But I I, I, th I think when you talk about politics, it is such a it's a sensitive topic for so many people that they literally go from when they are triggered. I don't care where they align. Some people, and I'm going to say, let's say it's let's say it's a minority. Let's say it's 49 percent of the folks go from zero to 80 just like that. And at that point for me, the conversation is over because I can't have a conversation with somebody who is literally losing their collective uh, 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 crap. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. And, okay, and, I, I, and, I, and, and I don't know how – it's so difficult at least for me because, look, you and I, again – we see things differently, but we're having what I consider a cordial, respectful conversation. Maybe we'll get into details. Maybe we won't. Maybe it'll become a little heated, but I think there's a, a mutual level. Well, I know there's a mutual level of respect, but when you have people who just go nuts, and I think when they show up, their initial agenda is, I'm not going to listen to anything that Johnny or Janie says. I'm basically going to say they are this, that, and the other thing. And, and for me, the conversation is over because you can't, you can't talk with somebody but I think you, with your Twitch stream, you're at an advantage 
because as a streamer, you have a level of control. So you could boot that, that person from the room. Um, but I think you're also vulnerable a bit because, um, since I've lurked in your channel, I mean, you, you have, you have your, uh, um, your camera, right? People yeah, know yeah. who you are and, and the ability of somebody to be anonymous in a chat room, um, is, is, is interesting. And I'm wonder I'm wondering how you deal with that. Well, I mean, if you're talking how about... open, how, I mean, do you ever feel reserved in what you say because of that level of, I don't know if you want to say privacy or level of safety or I, I don't know how to describe it. Well, I do what I can to keep safe. I mean, I mean, can somebody find out where I live just from looking at my picture? No. Um, but the, the idea that I'm opening my, cause I'm pleased people see what I look like. I mean, ooh, people made fun of me before for how I look, whatever, you know, and that's when I go into yarns about their mother and, you know, just, <laughs> just, 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 just to go, just to go to some method, like sticks, like, you really think I'm going to get that work up over some kid, some armchair warrior yeah. or some keyboard warrior over the internet trying to hurl insults just to get a reaction. No, I, that's just sticks and stones to me. And really, in a way, I kind of invite it because it, because it's more activity for my channel, more activity for my stream, and it's more, it gets my stats up. And then it only helps me out. Like, yeah, hey, keep it up. Hey, what else you got? Come on, come on. You can do better than that. Come on, come on. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just egging them on a little bit. And some figure it out and they leave and, you know, I win, and uh, <laughs> yeah, that's just a good strategy, I think. But that's gonna be, I mean, but but you know, you're right though, because I think one of the ways to uh, attack a, a, a troll, as they're referred to, is basically what you do, where you. I mean, so I've, I've read some articles online about how, how people deal with um, with trolls, and some folks will say they just completely ignore the 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 toxicity, the toxic talk in their chat room. And, but I think what you do is, is the right position to do where you challenge that person because you're probably right. They're probably some 13 year old pimple faced kid sitting in a chair, uh, just, uh, uh, trolling chat rooms and trying to, uh, uh, to annoy people for just the, the thrill of it. Would you agree? Oh, uh, sure. I mean, even I, when I was younger, kind of did that to a little bit, but I mean, I, not, not to the degree that people are doing it now, but for example, right years and years ago, I was on this with one chat program called MIRC. Um, yeah, I remember yeah. it. Okay, and, and this was actually so I'd go into one of these porno rooms, right? And I just oh. kind of let, let, I'd, I'd, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'd lurk. I'd, I'd lurk for a second, right? Then I'd say something. Hey, and I'd type a message like, "Hey, everybody, got new pictures of um, you know, Kate, you know, this actress or whatever." And then press a, press Alt plus F4 to initiate the transfer. And half the room, like 50 people in there, right? And half the room would just drop off because all that four close to the program. I got oh. booted. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, oh, those horny bastards just getting excited. I got booted so quick, and I was like, asshole. I'm sorry. Oh. I'll say I was like, jerk band or whatever, but I got booted. So, but yeah, like 50 people, half the room dropped off. And I mean, I mean, I did a little cutesy stuff like that, but nothing that was really dangerous or violent. But I used to, I used to do that like, like, uh, like 15 odd years ago. But even then, I just probably stayed a few times just to do it, and that was about it. I really haven't done anything since then. But sometimes the people nowadays, they'll, they'll try to send you a malicious software, try to hack your computer. I mean, they'll try to do all kinds of nasty things like that. Is definitely, at least for me, that's way too far. The difference between pranks and jokes versus something that can actually end up getting someone hurt or worse. And, I mean, I never stooped to anything like that. But, yeah, I, I, I mean, I see the appeal of them doing it. That's why I kind of understand their mindset. It's like you know, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this work to my advantage. So I'm gonna try to get them to say whatever, to to add more um, more uh, responses or chats to my room per hour, you know. And then the longer they stay, the long the higher my concurrent viewership goes up, and the more actions in the room that somebody else might come in, see the action, get involved. So it's just maybe it's a chance for me to snowball the the action into something larger and bigger, to where that just it works out better for my ch my stream. So, so, so you, you mentioned MRC and, and I, I know, you know, there's so in, in my time, right. There used to be M, MSN chat, which has been gone for years. Yahoo chat. I don't even know if it's still around. Uh, Pal talk, AOL, yep. instant messaging, um, Periscope. I don't think I've ever been 
uh, blocked from a a channel quicker than maybe within the last uh, three to five years. Somebody was in Periscope and he was talking about you know basic statutes and laws and what have you. And somebody said, "Where's he getting your data from?" So I typed in all caps, you know, uh, uh, BJS for Bureau of Justice Statistics, OJJDP for Office of Juvenile uh, Justice Delinquency Prevention, and a couple other ones. And he immediately blocked me because I'm not sure if he thought I was I was um, screaming or if he didn't know what those acronyms stood for. So and unfortunately, I couldn't get back into it. But that was that was my pal talk in Periscope it used to be my um, Sunday, Sunday morning entertainment. I would wake up, uh, work out, make my breakfast, make a pot of coffee, go to my computer and load up pal talk and just go into a random room and just listen to people have their own quote unquote little radio show, little 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 social little um uh, control con, con, control issue chat rooms where they dictated everything. I mean, if you raised your hand to say something, they'd boot you or they'd block you, mm. or they they. And, and I just thought this is ridiculous. Now I remember Twitch when it used to be just in TV. And I first heard about it years ago where somebody told me – this had to have been maybe 10 years ago. I don't know when Twitch began. and I think Amazon bought it a couple – within the last year for, what, $650 million, whatever the price was. Um, but Justin TV was was what Twitch is today. And I remember loading it up, and there was a dude. He must have been in Florida. It looked like he had the camera mounted – you know, elevated somewhere, you know, between the roof and maybe the island in his kitchen. And the view was the ocean. And that's what he had on the whole entire day. Wow. And I thought, who's going to sit and watch this? And then I realized I would come into work and just load that up and watch it because it was my break from reality and sort of a stress reliever. So now when I go on to Twitch, I basically go on and there are a number of people I watch for the sake of just, you know, uh, 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 what am I looking for? Just the sake of just, um, taking a break from work and reality. But I tell you that because for, for the following question, in your opinion, would you agree that the average viewer uh, comes to expect a, a level of uh, quality? And whether or not that level is high or just a, a basic quality stream, um, a certain amount of hours per week, a decent production value from the people they follow? And is that why they they subscribe and they donate or what are your thoughts on that well i think it all depends on the viewer it's a really subjective now some people want to stream that's interactive they control a little bit or some of the people like you sometimes that just want to stream where you can just sit and relax and enjoy a real world view perhaps of the ocean mm -hmm. um which, which it does sound it does sound really nice because it's not just some animation replaying over and over you actually actually viewing a real-time stream of of the ocean yeah, there were maybe. people walking on. You could see people on the beach. It was great. I loved watching it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh uh, no, you're all right. It's, it's like, um, so you're watching these, see, seeing things happen, kind of like, kind of like you're a fly in the wall, relaxing, see what could happen. Maybe you you could see some guys with a metal detector walk across the beach, see what see what he finds. Oh, it looks like he found something. So it, it's just like a little, I like I like a relaxing adventure sort of. So some people are into that, but other people are into interacting with girls that look, what they, you know, really good-looking girls or dudes that are like who know how to stream, and it's, it's such like that. But uh, so it's like it's really subjective. So I think Twitch, it, I think Twitch really should have one more category, at least saying that it's just devoted to political talk shows or or whatever, it's where the people who are political can be exposed a bit more. But that that's up to them. No, I under I uh, no no I got gotcha. you, I, I got gotcha. you. Um, so so your plan is 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 what you, you started streaming. Uh, your is your plan to do this full time? Is your plan to do it part time as a hobby? What ultimately does 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 Joe want to do? Uh, well I'm, I mean I can't say I have a plan right now. I mean don't get me wrong, as I'm progressing, I seem to want to take certain actions that you know what might produce the best results or outcome. But in the end, I don't have like a, don't have a master plan. I'm just trying to see how far I can take this, how far I can go with it while I'm trying to employ the best strategies of, uh, of doing so. Um, some work, some work better, some don't. 
But for me, it seems like we were working out pretty good because I'm already at 100 followers. And I'm already affiliated into my well into my well past my first month. And the people coming to my room are yeah, they're regular. And new people do seem to show up out of nowhere because of that increased traffic exposure. That it seems to be going pr pretty good for me only doing Twitch for about two months now. So, I mean, as far as a big plan, I mean, I'm, I'm just winging it, but trying to wing it with strategy and ideas that may that 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 seem to work for other people so do you do you stream prep i mean do you sit down and, and sort of map out what you want to do for for your stream whether you're streaming for four hours or, or six hours or you just turn on the computer and, and start the game and 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 go from there well i don't have much uh prep time but i do have a little uh, animation that says hey i'm setting the stream getting started soon but that, that's just me Opening up the programs, opening up the games, making sure everything's running good. And then as soon as I'm ready, which takes about maybe uh, five minutes, then I'll just toggle the uh, that animation off the screen. And then there you see my stream the way it is. And then I'll just take it from there. I pretty much I pretty much just, just wing it. Or if I have a particular topic in mind, I might put that in the title. And people come into the room talk about it. Or if they want to talk about something else, we can talk about that too. So since you're, would, would you, is it safe to say that your stream first focuses on politics and gaming second? Well, I think it's just, it hopes to focus on politics, but if people don't want to talk about games or other topics, I think that's fine too. Um, but the biggest reason I put that title in the room is to attract people who are politically minded from all political uh, sides, because everyone from the left all the way to the right, right, is welcome to come to the room and say whatever they got to say. And a lot of people, I think, they, 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 they're they afraid that they come in the room, they say their line, then they leave because they're afraid I'm going to ban them for saying something that would normally offend other people. And it's like, like guys, ain't no need to be, they don't need to be afraid of me for, for that reason. I ain't going to do that to you. Just, but they leave too quickly, and it's like, oh, what can you do? But but it's but it's mainly, like, it's folks, so much focus on politics. I'd like to talk about it. Or at least it's a rule. Cause I know I know a lot of Twitch channels have this thing. This one of the rules, like don't talk politics. So I was just maybe making it to a lobby tour. Hey, I'm your friendly host, and I just you know let people come and talk about what they want to talk about within the guise of guise of reason and you know like that. But yeah, do, do you think that comes from fear where streamers just basically say, look, this is a streamer. We have um, there's there's a there's a a somewhat fairly large streamer. He goes by the name of a uh, uh, Co Carnage. No, don't know if you know him, but he's a. It's a very. He advertises at a very friendly uh, family stream. He's a variety streamer. I'm not certain if he is one, but I've never necessarily. I've never heard him. Um, really discuss in any great detail any, um, cultural, political, social, social topic. And, and you're right. When you were mentioning that, I was trying to think of. Mentioning by that, I mean talking about very few political streamers trying to think about how many streamers actually will engage in that sort of conversation to, in any depth. And I I cannot think of, of one that at least goes to your level where they say this is uh, – this is an you look at this is one option you have in this chat room. If you don't want to talk about politics, you don't have to. But no, the option is there. I think most don't do that, and I wonder if they don't do it because they're they're it, on it a on a uh, at a position where so I'll, I always like to use Ninja as the example, the guy who plays Fortnite and he was on CNBC Squawk Box last uh, March. I think he was quoted as making. Um, over six hundred and fifty thousand uh, uh, um, a year. Wow! Uh, at at this point, I, I you know I know I know I've seen two commercials on YouTube. Just uh, I'm sorry, commercials on regular TV, uh, network TV, um, for for Samsung, the phone. So I think he has a, a contract, or he's somehow sponsored by them. But this guy makes a crap load of money. But if he were to switch to Another topic or another game, my my thought is that his subscriber uh, ship in his viewer count would drop dramatically. And I wonder if he is in a position, and this is a question I, I have for you, can you become too big where you are stuck or you're, for lack of a better phrase, a slave to the stream that you created because the 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 income – 
in the the, the 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 quality of life you're now accustomed to based on how much money you're generating per month is dependent on what you started and what you have to continue to do. I mean, do you ever have, do you have that fear? Uh, not really. Um, well, at least at least for me, it's I'd say it's a it's a bit uh, only because like, let's say with Ninja, right? People know who he is. People like him yeah. pretty much for for for, for me. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. The um, people like Ninja, right? They have this already have seem to have this sort of, I wouldn't say cult of personality, but people know him. They like him for his uh-huh. personality, so they could probably stick with him with 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 a lot of things that he's done. Now, with some people say, "Oh my God, he's not paying Fortnite." I and stuff. Some will most likely, but the, I feel that the vast majority of people are there because not just because he's really good at games, but because of his personality and how he interacts with people and how he makes people feel. So people, I feel, will stick with him more because of that. So if I try to present the same kind of same kind of qualities to where, hey, this this guy's all right. He isn't going to be some left wing douchebag. Or um, so I feel that even though he might try other things, I want to see what he's trying into because so far his the things he's doing are pretty good. So at least they're at least willing to give a shot. And if people for some reason for Ninja start dropping off his subscriber base or followers and all that, then he'll, he'll just, all he has to do is just go back to what he was doing before. Then, then maybe try something else, see if that'll work out. Then try something else, see if that'll work out. And uh, it's just part of the ongoing experimental process of seeing what you people that follow you or subscribe to you are into. Um, it, it's, it's kind of trial and error, but do I think that some people actually have to play a particular game forever? Not not really. I'd say most, most people, as long as they have a personality to to you know, make people happy, then I think they can pretty much do uh, whatever they, you know, whatever they focus on. They may, may, they might even say, hey, audience, I'm going to have a poll. What game do you think you should play next? And most people say, play this game and go with the majority for a little bit uh, to, you know, to switch things up and have some of our variety because I think variety is important too. So I, I know, I know that, 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 that uh, money is always a sensitive topic for any streamer you're talking to. And, and I, 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 how do I how do I ask this question, which doesn't make it sound as if I think streamers are are ultimately um, money hungry grubber types? Um, I'd say I'd say, I'd say s- s- some are that way, but me, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I have the the streamlabs link in my channel below, and I even have a little the little subscriber goal count. But I'll tell tell people. I'll, all the time, like, hey, only donate bits if you want to. Only subscribe if you want to. Only donate cash if you want to. Don't feel pressured that you have to do it. I just got those there because some people really do. Or really, some people really are generous, and I want to give them the opportunity just to, you know, send a little money or send some bits my way or to be a subscriber. But yeah, I imagine some people. Are, I mean, if you're too money hungry like that, you're gonna turn off a lot of people. So. If you have like if you have like a subscriber like a, I'm sorry like a, like a money goal for example real quick a money goal right. that says hey I need 350 bucks to pay my electric bill people are gonna be turned off by that it, 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 people don't don't want that kind of pressure so I've seen people do that before and I'm like dude you know, I, I won't ever do that but you know what I I but what you just mentioned I've seen I I've gone and, I mean so so how I found you so my methodology was basically this I would click on. So how did I find? I think it was just chatting or some random game, and I immediately paged down all the way to the bottom of the screen. And then I just started scrolling to say, okay, who has the fewest viewers? Who has who's doing something that visually looks interesting to me? That's how I found your channel. I bypassed the first, the first, you know, uh, eight nine rows, depending on how many people are, are viewing this game. And I just find people that are sort of low end. I come in, I say hello. Or I don't say hello, or I just sit there and, and watch the person's interaction with the um, with 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 the chat room. So so I I I, I quickly Googled uh, Ninja Net Worth, and I'm at the Celebrity Net Worth uh, website. And according to this website, now whether or not it's it's legit or not, uh, Tyler Ninja Blevins' net worth is ten million dollars. <laughs> that's the estimated. That's the estimated. Uh, um, he was born in 91, so my math is right, 2001, 2011, that's 20. Uh, what is he, 27? 27, 28 years old? Nice. And, but that's a combination between his YouTube, which I believe uh, they indicate that he's got more than 17 million YouTube subscribers. I don't know how YouTube monetizes it. 
but I mean, come on, come on. Uh, yeah, I, I look at, so so when I, this this may come across as me being jealous, but it's really not. But when it boils down to it for me, and I am by I am omitting individuals like you or streamers like you from this group because you do this for fun, you enjoy it, you have other responsibilities in life. But when somebody gets to a point, and this is what I was mentioning earlier or alluding to earlier, where else is he going to go? Granted, he gets some movie deal or something um, where he can make this that amount of money by what he. Playing video games, I am you know I know he has some sponsorships and what have you, but when it when it boils down to it, the man plays video games, <laughs> and, and 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 people continue to subs subscribe to him. And I just think to myself, if I know you, for instance, have five thousand subscribers, why do I need to get? Why do you need any more money? Maybe it's maybe it's uh. I don't want to say culpa, maybe it's a, whatever that psychological term is when, you know, you see a bunch of, it, it, it's, it's, it's the, um, what do they call it? The, uh, the donation train or the subscriber train, right? Mm -hmm. Where one person does it and pretty soon five, six, 10, but I've seen his stream and I, I will just see, you know, so-and-so subscribed for 24 months in a row. So-and-so just has subscribed in these, you know, so-and-so donated, you know, tier one or tier two or tier three. And I think, why are people keep giving him money? It doesn't make any sense to me. Can you help me understand this? Uh, You're yeah, a smart I'm, dude. I don't. I don't get it. Well, my my guess would be that it, it's just the snowball effect. Like for example, if I have like a bunch of people in my room, and somebody wants to do, is, donates donates um, a bunch of money to me, well, guess what? Their name's gonna pop up on the screen, and a lot of people are gonna recognize that this person donated so and so, say fifty bucks, and that's that's kind of like buying notoriety. That other that, that the, all these other the uh, viewers in the chat room going to see or in the, in the stream chat anyway. And it can, it can be something like that. But I think it, it just comes to people, more and more people just like to do like, I mean, well, more and more people as they see the stream, like what he does. And to them, it doesn't really matter that he already has a certain amount of subscribers. They want, they want to give him money because they like what he's, they like what he's doing. And he, they feel that, Ninja is providing them entertainment. So, hey, here's five bucks. Here's, here's, here's another subscriber. Here's another subscriber. So it just grows like that. And it does seem kind of ridiculous. Like the guy's just playing playing games, having fun, getting donations from people or subscriptions from people. But but the thing is, he is offering entertainment. And it's and it's a lot more act, act, interactive entertainment that, that, that's, that, that you can get from, say, television or the radio you know, it's something that hey, as I'm on my phone, was I'm throwing this guy a few bucks. So I'm, I'm guessing most of his subscribers are tier one or tier two. Me and a lot of people are like, here, he's five bucks a month. Here, here's ten bucks a month because you entertain me. I like what you do. So, and that just as more and more people get exposed to it, more and more people end up, you know, subscribing to this dude. And that that is just it's like the snowball effect. It's just a whole a whole bunch of people building up to be the ones that give him, you know, so the donations, the subscriber money. And they kind of want to be close to someone who's really successful like that, so it just it just builds upon itself. But yeah, it is ridiculous. Like, I don't think it's ridiculous, but it just sounds that way. Playing video games gets paid for, it. and I can see how. I, I know what you're saying. You're not jealous, jealous, but you got a little bit of that. Um, I wouldn't say envy, but you're like, man, I could. The thing is, that could be if it were you worked at it for a while, or I worked at it for. Because I think Ninja's been doing it for six years, so. <laughs> If, but but then but then again, he he started when Twitch was a lot smaller. So but it's still there's still plenty of opportunity just to like for example, if you wanted to move your your platform and to extend to the Twitch streams and your your exposure gets big enough, you can actually have your your Twitch streams be, be political and have a bunch of people hop onto your stream whenever you do it, and they can send money, send bits your way once you become affiliated, and you can grow grow like that as well. Because I think that's a huge potential for political streamers on Twitch. Yeah, okay, I completely understand. Um, so so my, my follow-up to that is this, though, but it, it, what but what one gives up? So, I mean, you know, I, I think it's safe to say that if, if, if somebody sits down and says, I want to be a full-time streamer, they have to dedicate, in my opinion, 12 to 16 hours per day of streaming, seven days a week, 
you know, 365 days out of the year if they want to keep this momentum going. And I say that because Lyric, who's somewhat of a famous streamer, had sort of, I don't want to say a, a mental breakdown, but sort of needed a break. So he took, I think, six days off. And when he came back, he also tweeted this, but he stated that he, um, I think, lost 2,000 plus subscribers. So that tells me that they, that your followers will love you. But if you don't continue to, to offer them what they demand or require for their sub per month that they yeah. will turn on you which well, is shitty but it, it is shitty but i think that twitch and the people are a lot of people in there are really fickle so if you need to take a break for a week or two hey, i'll tell people that right i'll say i will stream almost every day but if i need to take a break i will but or you can have a set schedule say hey i only do the shows on monday wednesday saturday or monday wednesday friday and then if you do it like that, people will get accustomed to that. So consistency is a really big key if you want to be a streamer. To where, you know, but you can say things, hey, I take off Christmas week, I take off, I take off Thanksgiving week, I take off the 4th of July week, or I might do a, a special 4th of July show on the 3rd or something, or like that, to where you can people can be expected of that. Now, the reason that I suspect a lot of people may have unsubscribed to him is because they think that, oh, this guy, you know, he's just cut and run, he's took my money, cut and run, without any real warning, and they, they just unscrew some subscribe to him. So, of course, can he build back to that? Yeah. But you know what? The truth of the matter is, if you're, if you're streaming like that constantly and you have a choice between your money and you've been doing this for months and months and months and you're, and you're very successful and hopefully you didn't spend it all on candy and records and you saved the money, you can take some time off because your mental health and your physical health is more important than, than, than people trying to entertain people on Twitch. So you can always build that back up. You can always say, hey, this is what happened. You know, gain the sympathy of people, and, they, and a lot of them probably would come back if they knew what was going on. That the guy just didn't take didn't take their sub money. Joe, ran. I gotcha. You need, hang on, we got top of the hour break. Okay.
already. Okay, you all, as they say in some parts of the world, welcome back to the uh, the program This, That, and the Other. I am talking with uh, Joe Lee, a Twitch streamer, and apparently, one second, hang on, Joe, don't get excited. Joe, Joe. Yep. okay, yep. I, I muted you, and then for some reason I could not figure out how to take you off of mute. And then I had to remove you and then add you back to the call. So that's that's how that goes. Um, okay, so so the, the first hour was sort of me uh, rambling on about everything that I wanted to, uh, mostly what I wanted to talk about. And I thank you for that. What I want uh, to do, if you don't mind, is I want to give you the opportunity to, um, I don't know, uh, uh, what do you want to talk about? As as odd as that sounds, it almost sounds like I'm not prepped, but I am. But I I I, I like this to be a, a two way street. What 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 you know? What does Joe think about when he's not twitching? When he's not twitching. When he's not streaming. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense. When you're, I mean, I ask it because, you know, I'm, you I'm, you, I I'm really curious to know what what the misconceptions that you think people have about someone, like yourself, based on your political affiliations. What do they immediately think? That, that you're an asshole, or what? what <laughs> you're uneducated. What do they think? Ah, uh, man, it just depends. Uh, man, it just depends. I'm hearing a weird. I'm, I'm hearing an echo. Weird. I'm hearing an echo. Oh, um, let me see if I can. Uh, is it gone? Let me try. Is it still there, or is it gone? Yeah, is it testing one two? Testing one two. Still I don't there. Hear. Still is there. Is it? Still there. Uh, I don't know what that is. I, I'm a, I'm good on mine. I don't have anything in the background plan. Me neither. Me neither. Huh. I don't know. Maybe it's a conspiracy theory. Maybe there is. Is it annoying? Do you want me to uh, remove you and add you back? Maybe that'll clear it up. Yeah, try that. Yeah, try okay. That. One second. Oh. Now let's see if that tried it. Now let's see if that tried is it. it. Better. Oh God! It's oh, still there. God! It's still there. Yeah, I don't know what the uh, what what the what the uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't. Uh, let me think. Let me let me try now. How about now? Testing. Is it gone? 
One, two, three. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. Okay, it's my fault because I was sharing my screen for audio and then I realized that. <laughs> it, it was repeating what you were saying. Okay, so now we're good. My fault. So so that's basically the question you were asking before. Misconception that people have of you based on your political affiliation once they enter your, your, your streaming channel. Well, I can't say for everyone, but I'd say mostly I'm, I'm guessing those who are on the far right would think that I'm just I might be because I'm I'm wearing my political affiliation on my sleeve like that. Um, that I might be some left wing reactionary that might jump down the throats if they say something that I may not like, or they come in the room try to try to start a little you know flaming session and that they they're, they're thinking that I'm just gonna kick them out, boot them, or whatever. But you know it's like like I said before, it's just it's just all in good fun for me. I mean I've been dealing with trolls since. God, since the late 90s on the internet, so it's like I said, it's nothing new to me. So I, I just try to let people know, hey, even though I'm on the, on the left, and um, I, I try to be a free, free speech advocate as much as possible. But I mean, in many ways, people might be some of your more right leaning listeners might be surprised to know that, hey, I like making money too. And you know, the thing is. I'd like to see certain policies get implemented that would actually end up based on this. Based, this is based on test evidence, based on um, many test pilots and all that. That would actually, you know, it would actually greatly increase economic activity, grow the economy, and pretty much wipe out grinding poverty across the board in the United States. That would actually end up saving us money compared to what we're doing now, without. Without having to cut any current, without having to cut any current social programs, so. So, I mean, so do you want to do you want to share that with the audience? Yeah, I can, yeah, I can, I can do that. But the okay. the idea the idea is like I don't know you maybe you've heard about this maybe you haven't, but have you ever heard about the? Uh, and it sounds crazy at first, but I say you sound like you're open minded about saying because even as left wing as I am, when I first heard this idea and what it was about, even I was kind of like, uh, woo, that's kind of. Are you different. talking about universal income? Oh yeah, you you got it, man. Okay, uh, okay, go, go ahead. Uh, you, you, <laughs> you have the floor. You have the floor. I will give you as much time as you need to explain this. <laughs> I know it's, it's, it sounds so crazy, but it, it really isn't because they really have done many test pilots and test studies in many places around the world, and it really does seem to work as advertised. So that's why when I first was introduced to it, right, it wasn't just that. I would just instantly fell in love with it automatically. I wanted, okay, well, I wanted to know what kind of information was there on this. And it turns out they've done test pilots, like, for example, back in the 70s in Canada. They did tests in India. They did te- also did tests, um, I think, some Kenya, Africa, I think it was, and a couple other places. And there's, and, there's, and there's sort of a basic income situation going on in Alaska with a permanent fund. It's not... The exact same thing as the basic income was about, but it, it's kind of it's it's close enough to say to show that hey, this yeah, direct cash transfers keep poverty poverty's expensive effects at a minimum, and it really does keep economic growth sustainable, or you know, it, and it really does help out the way it suggests. So if we take the next step and to simply do on a national scale that. Well, other countries are testing right now, like right now in Canada. Even though Doug Ford cut the basic program test pilot, even though he said he promised on his campaign he wouldn't, he's actually being sued for that right now. In Finland, they're just going to wrap up the program at the end of the year, I think. And um, I can't wait to see what the test results of that's going to be. So even though those aren't really true test, you know, test programs that are exactly defined as a basic income, it's it, it'll be like a window into the, the what 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 it could do for us. But the basic idea is that if you're 18 years and older and you're an American citizen, doesn't matter if you work or not, or if you're rich or not, poor or not, doesn't matter. You get a get a thousand dollars a month from the Ameri- from the U.S. government to spend on whatever you choose, however you choose, and. It doesn't matter, like I said, if you're super rich or you're super poor or you work or not, you get it. And you get to keep that money in addition to what you make on top of your job. But well, that, that's, 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 that's mostly true for those people at the bottom of the income scale and sort of it tapers off as it gets past, say, 50,000 a year, 60,000 a year, 60,000. It begins to taper off. 
but I can explain how that works later on. But um, the, the, the idea is that what we're doing now is the more expensive option, which is letting grinding poverty, poverty and, and its symptoms exist, and it's costing us to a study. I can send you the link if you want to where to a report uh, to this poverty rep report by the Centers for American Progress, stating that poverty is costing our economy roughly 3.8 percent of GDP every year, and in our today's terms, that's roughly $722 billion, and that's just poverty issues related to crime, health issues, and lost productivity. Just those three things are costing us 3.8% of our gross domestic product, and we're, so we're basically paying to have poverty exist. So if we did a basic income, the net cost of the basic income would actually be something like between $550 billion and $650 billion, something around that range. So it would actually be cheaper, and we'd end up saving money, and we'd wipe out poverty at, you know, at the, at the, you know, the bottom of the scale, lifting, um, lifting those people up like that or dealing with those issues. And on top of that, just one more thing, um, if we did a basic income <clears throat> like that for eight years, we would actually grow the economy $2.5 trillion added to the GDP at the end of the year. Uh, Eight years. Okay. Okay. So, so I, I have one slight issue with comparing Finland to the U.S. because we're talking about Finland has what five and a half million people compared to three hundred million in the U.S. Okay. So, so, so let, I, I just I'm, I'm taking some notes here because I, I want to know what the 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 minimum dollar amount is. So, thank you for referencing studies and not just saying, "Hey, it's it's this, that, and the other thing," and just some stuff I can't cite. So. Earlier this year in 2018, um, Chris Hughes, who's the co-founder of, of Facebook, he argued that a, a number of people earning uh, $50,000 a year or less, and he, and he, uh, it was U.S. workers, uh, students, uh, and, 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 and caregivers, and I don't know how he defined caregivers, maybe for the elderly, I'm not quite sure, but those folks making $50,000 a year or less, he said that those folks should receive a guaranteed income of about $500 a month. Uh, and he said that that money would be guaranteed, that money would be funded uh, by uh, uh, taxing the top 1%. And he talked about modernizing the uh, earned income tax credit. So using that $50,000 a year number, are you talking about people, are you, are you suggesting people who earn more or less than that? And how is it funded? Well, actually, it's, it can be funded, um, the idea that, to do a basic income, you have to add more taxes to the rich or middle class, whatever. is is actually is actually a bit of a it's a bit of a flawed premise because we're doing the more expensive option now, and mm -hmm. because and because we'd actually end up saving money with a basic. Now, don't get me wrong. Like let's say let's say if we did yeah right, if we did it started to do a basic income next year. I mean, Trump will never do it, but um, if we did it next year, of course we'd have to put the initially one time payment of because the, the, the federal government can make its own money, of a one-time $3 trillion payment into the fund, then year after year after year, you just simply just top off, the, top off the money that was used in the net expenditure of the basic income, which predominantly goes to people on the making, sliding gradually scale down, you know, less than, say, 80, 90 or $80,000 a year, so, and that, that cost would be $500 billion a year. So our economy is large enough to absorb that one-time $3 trillion Deposit into the fund, and then year after year after year, it would be only be like, like I said, 500 to 650 billion dollars a year to simply replenish the fund to keep it going, to keep it going, year after year after year. And also, the idea with Finland is that you can scale, you can scale programs up, you can scale programs down. The idea that all oh, these countries are small because, you know, it, it's it's it seems a bit, it seems a bit I don't know, I don't, I don't want to say lazy, intellectually, but it just seems that. Well, a lot of these other countries, even though they're smaller, they seem to be doing better than us. I mean, we can, we're America, you know, we can do better. We can definitely do better than what we're doing now. And we, we're we very good at taking, sometimes very bad, but usually very good at taking other ideas from around the world, taking them, Americanizing them, making them better, making them our own, and then making the world, the rest of the country sort of, you know, envious of what we did with that. So I think if we took their ideas and, or at least the idea of a basic income actually made our own, made it our own and just the way we do it within 
how it's how it's how ideally it's supposed to be implemented. I think I think we can we can we can def, definitely be the envy of everyone else, but the idea that just because Finland's small, um, but we can't do it because they have five million people, we can scale things up and down. I mean, don't get me wrong, people want to try to come, even though people make the comparison, say Finland or Norway, they're smaller countries, but for some reason when they want to try to compare Venezuela to the United States, well, Venezuela is a small country too, and it's and that's but for some reason it's okay to compare that small country to the United States, so it's it's really weird. So 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 let me, let me do sort of like the the the, the, the pro con position because I think it's important to to be to be you know uh, honest on both sides. So 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 as I understand it and as you described it, it, it would it would it would it would make sense to say that one of the benefits of this would be a negotiation strategy that somebody could use for their current job to negotiate a higher wage. I think it, it's safe to say that. But isn't it also safe to say that a, a negative of this would be that if I'm getting an extra 500 bucks a month, whatever the number is, um, how many people would 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 save that for retirement or what have you, as opposed to just going and spending it, and wouldn't that ultimately create inflation? Well, they actually did a recent like test test in Mexico, uh, basic income. I can show you the link to that as well. Um, and it's shown that the inflation, the, the little, the little <clears> test <throat> about inflation in Mexico, and actually in the end deflation occurred. And the idea is that the basic income, if you want to save the money, that's fine. But like I said, do what you want with it. Or if you want to invest it in the business, you know that's fine too. Because I feel that a lot of people would feel less uncertain about starting a business if they had that financial backing, that thousand dollars a month each and every month, no matter what, to say, you know what. Now I can take these risks to start this business I've always wanted to start, and they can do do that as well. So, if they had that money, well, it, it, it'll totally get rid of a lot of the stress and anxiety, and a lot of the fear factor. And you're right about the uh, the job thing that the, the people would have say, you know what, I'm not in a desperate situation. I'd like to work here, but you know, you need to pay me a little bit more if I am to work here. And uh, so, another another big thing, real quick that. Is important. I think if basic income should be considered and looked at is rising automation. Automation's been uh, with machines and robots and all that, especially with Amazon, has been increasing over the years and will only get more and more and more become more and more part of our economy. And because of that, more people would be displaced. Even people with medium to high skills, like say with programmers, doctors, lawyers, um, paralegals. Even writers as well. I mean, I mean, I'm talking, I'm talking skills to where you're not just a burger flipper or you're putting a box in the box like I am right now. And even that will be replaced. But a lot of people will be affected by it, and truck drivers as well. So I think that's why it should be considered. You know, speaking speaking of automation, I was watching uh, Terminator Gen uh, Terminator Salvation last night when Skynet apparently took over the world in 2012 or whatever it was. Uh, it's, it's all over with. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I appreciate, okay. I, I, I appreciate your points, but my, so, so this is what, what, how it boils down to me for, um, why should, okay. Excluding those who have physical, not, I'm going to exclude the physical people. Because I know some people who have physical and mental disabilities who who work, and yes, they're subsidized by some type of social service program. Fine. So I'll put those people in the category of a vulnerable vulnerable population. Let's say the elderly, the physical and mentally handicapped. <clears throat> handicapped. Other than that, <clears throat> excuse me. Other than that, I feel as if it's 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 like a hand like a handout. I, it it just, it just, to me it's just. I don't understand why people need an incentive just to get up off their backside and work. I mean, there's a level of laziness that I think cannot be ignored when you're talking about something like this. I mean, some people will just go, my gosh, great. We, we, I, I make less than this. I get free money. What, what incentive do I have to go in and, and, and better myself? Well, the thing is, is that when, when the, a uh, lot of the test pilots have done, but no one basically income shown that people end up becoming, more productive. The people that tend, like for example, in Canada in the 70s, the people who quit the jobs were either students wanting to go to school, or mothers who wanted to be full-time mothers, or people who wanted to 
be caregivers to the elderly or the sick or the disabled. Mm -hmm. Those are the people, those are people that ended up quitting their jobs. But most people still still worked at the job they worked at, and they still you know worked as mm -hmm. they did before. And the thing is, the pro the people's productivity actually increased. Now 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 let's say if you gave everybody ten thousand dollars a month, yeah, you might run into that problem. But the thing is, a thousand dollars a month, of course, times twelve, right? It's roughly the mm -hmm. poverty poverty level of the United States. So if you say, hey, here's a floor, here's a minimum income floor that you have, you basically subsidize your very needs, such as most of your rent, some some food, clothing, sanitary needs. But if you want those extras, hey, you want a nice house, you want a nice car, you want a nice these all these other nice little electronics or whatever. Well then, you got to go out and somehow be productive yourself and add to the economy more that way. So if you give people like, way too much money, I can see I can see that argument, I can see that see that position. But if you thousand bucks a month, I mean, think about it. Maybe you know, in, even in, in the Midwest, thousand dollars thousand dollars a month would go really fast, and. Yeah, so I mean, if you're so if you're in some place like New York or Florida or California, I mean, forget about it. a thousand bucks a month. Probably won't even touch the rent at most places in the in those states. But um, so so how do you, how do you address? I mean, for you got the contiguous forty-eight. Let's exclude Alaska and Hawaii because they sort of got their own thing going on. But how do you address the? So I live in uh, uh, Minnesota. How do I address the cost of living for Minnesota compared to the cost of living of? Cal I mean, I'm, I'm, let's not even go east and west coast. Let's go other areas of the Midwest. Let's go South Dakota. There's no state income tax in South Dakota. How do you? How do you? How do, how do you not partition? I guess not partition. How do you? Uh, what, what am I looking for? How do you um, determine the, uh, the 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 monthly payment? The monthly? Uh, uh, I'm not going to say the monthly gift. Well, I think of it more as a. Like I said, but not a handout or a gift, or whatever. But as a citizen's dividend, and if you want later on, of course, I can actually make the case that through you and me and everybody yep. else in this country, through our consumer spending, have actually earned a citizen's dividend like this. But that's later on. Um, no, let's do it now. <laughs> you want to do it now? Yeah, let's do it now. We got, we got, we got 38 minutes. Oh, sure. You know, okay. seriously, take me through because I'm 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 honestly and genuinely interested in not necessarily the the the, the UBI, but I'm I'm interested in in your approach to it. I mean, you, you know, yeah, uh, th yeah. I mean, get the, get this. Like, I'll tell you I'll tell you everything, but real quick. Okay. I've I've only found out about basic income like about a year and a half ago, and I was through some some base some animation cartoon on Facebook. I clicked on it, and you know, I was yeah, as progressive and as liberal as I am, and as I active I am on the internet you know it's, it's I'm, I'm surprised that I didn't come across it sooner so I'm kind of, I was kind of mad at myself about that but you know at first it sounded weird to me right but then I started looking into it looking into the all the all the information about it the studies and it became more and more apparent that over the course of that time that hey man this is something that we should look at so so I've been doing that for the first six months right I've been sort of looking into it and then over the casual over the course of the last year I've been really looking deep into it. It's like, okay, what's the, what are all the usual rebuttals? What are all the usual uh, objections to it? What are the concerns with it? And every single concern and objection that, that's that's there should be addressed and raised. Well, raised and addressed. Um, so, so when when you're feeling questions, you may feel I don't know if you. I mean, I'm I'm sure you don't, but in case you maybe worried worried that I'm going to be upset at you asking, I'm not going to be. So I mean, there there are definitely concerns that if you have it. Other people are going to have it too. So I've been looking at this really hardcore for the past six months to a year, and because I want to know everything about it. And because of that, I discovered that, you know, like what we're spending on, like for example, I told you what we're spending on poverty now, just on crime, health, and lost productivity, is costing more than what a basic income would cost in the end, and we would actually save us money compared to what we're doing now. And we how we can even expand. Some some social programs like expand say disabilities expand um, housing for some people, and be worried about the payment being across the country being different. It would have to be universally the same, because the thing is poverty hits worse, tends to worse, tends to hit the most in midwestern, southern states. So that would definitely help out those individuals down there a great deal. That would also help out those who live in poverty that live in urban areas too, like in like in Chicago, uh, parts of New York, California. So, so it have to be evenly a thousand dollars a month as a start. And, um, 
God, what, what was the other point you wanted to make too? Um. Uh. Oh. Uh. What did I make? Um. Pro, uh, incentive not to work. Um. Um. Lazy people. Um. I forget. I'm sorry. I forget. No, no, no you're I mean, on a roll. I was listening to you. No. no I'm saying, like, as far as like the idea of, you know, people will be be them a thousand bucks a month whether they'd be lazy. The test studies again have shown that that that's that's not the case. People end up becoming more productive. They start businesses. <laughs> And they, they actually either stay at the job they work at or they want to go on to a, attain a higher education. That happens like the vast majority of the time with these test studies all around the world. They, they've done this. Um, whenever they did a basic income test, educational outpro- outcomes improved, health outcomes improved, uh, drug and alcohol use reduced. Um, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's, another, that's another aspect that has to be addressed as well. Oh, well, people would be, be, a, be a bunch of drunkards on heroin. That's that's not borne out by the evidence by these test pilots. Um, so I tend to want to try to look at the test pilots and data as much as possible versus try to go on just speculation and all that. So, I mean, in the end, Mario, if you don't agree or don't like the idea, no matter what, even though you've seen all the evidence, test evidence articles and all these all these, all this evidence on it, and say, "Oh, I still don't like the idea." Well, then, then that's fine. I would rather the American people know every little thing, every little upside, downside, good side, bad side about, or potential bad side about basic income, be fully educated on it, and then reject it, than for people to try to pass a basic income and that people, for, for most people, not to understand what it's about and what it can do, and not be properly educated on it. I mean, I, I just, that's, that's just my position on it. But I'm trying to uh, no no, and I appreciate that. What I'm trying to figure out is what would be the minimum dollar amount needed to eliminate poverty, with the exclusion of those folks again who have some who fall into a a vulnerable population. You know, um, children, you know, um, um, disabled, mentally or physically disabled individuals, those sorts of people. Well, I don't know what that. Do- I mean, I mean, so so what? What? Uh, um, what? You know, poverty level is what twelve twelve thousand a year? Yeah, somewhere they, around there. They they suggest that as a starting point because that is the poverty level. So, if you're a single person making twelve thousand dollars a year or less, you know, you you're automatically yet in in poverty according to the federal income statistics or the the, the federal the federal poverty guidelines guidelines. Right. So so that that that's just a start. And really, personally, I, this is my personal opinion. I don't have anything back. I think that poverty line for a single person should be raised due to the cost of goods going up, inflation, and all that. Uh, that that's naturally occurring over the many, many years. That that number should be increased to say fifteen thousand at least, or maybe eighteen thousand dollars a year. So if we did went we by eighteen thousand dollars a year, that'd be fifteen hundred dollars a month. And again, I can't live off fifteen hundred dollars a month. I need at least twenty five hundred dollars a month to, to pay for all. The, Things that I do, even yeah. though I live, even though I live with my brother, and and, my, and the other person, that you know, hey, we we still got stuff that we gotta buy, and things happen, and you know, un, un, unexpected expenditures, you know, they can they expenditures they come up, so really, I mean, if if I can just, I mean, if people can understand, like 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 I said, if it was like ten thousand dollars a month, right? I mean, people would just ah oh, screw off, but even so. That would generate so much spending as far as consumer spending. You know, that would probably far away anything else. But that 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 thing's going too far right now because I think the conversation for the time being should revolve more around revolve, revolve more around the common objections and concerns with the basic income because because um, a lot of people are going to be stuck on this. Oh, people just be lazy, and that even though the test evidence says otherwise, or people do drugs and drink a lot, even though the test evidence says otherwise because they've been running these tests i think since the 90s very in various places because there's a website i can give you if you want that can um link you to a lot of the to the case studies yeah sure so so uh, it's safe to say and i think you'd agree that 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 uh, the line quoted in um whenever movie michael douglas was in then he came back and reprised the role greed is good um and even using twitch as an example i'm, I'm pretty certain that uh if, if if ninja if the estimate is correct that ninja is making ten million a year, I'm pretty certain that he and his wife can, you know, 
uh, let's just do the simple 50% tax because I guess I'm guessing that he pays taxes quarterly. So let's say he's 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 netting five million a year. Uh, I'm pretty certain that he he and his wife are able to live on, you know, uh, 20% of that. Um, but I'm pretty certain they're not going to uh, want to or appreciate uh, a higher tax based on what he does for a living to earn that much money. Well, well you want to say something else? Or? No, that's it. Okay, that's okay. It, no, no. Um, well, to me, the word greed is a matter of perspective because it's kind of like our you, you, you can't, when you see it, you kind of know it, but you can't properly define it because it really is a subject, subjective term. So if I say this person is being greedy or that person is being greedy, then someone else will say, nah, they're not being greedy. They're just, they're not. But, but the thing is, greed seems to come from a sense of in, a personal insecurity that you have to gain so much just to be ahead, way ahead of the game so you don't ever be caught being, you know, with money anyway, being flat broke at the end and being poor again. That, that, that's, that's it's sort of, it's like it's sort of like a you know, vicious cycle that feeds into itself. Like, the, well, if I have this, I better get more because if I don't get more, I might end up having less. And that, that, that sort of snowballs into what a lot of people might consider to be what they understand to be greedy. But again, it's it's, it's a subjective term, and at least at least to me, it is. No, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Um, can, can we change topics for a second? Uh, sure. I want to run something by you. I have a theory. I have a theory that dating is nothing more than a legalized form of prostitution. Now, hear me out, because people think I'm people think I'm crazy. We've moved completely from a discussion on UBI to <laughs> prostitution. So the, the, the language today is, is escort. So I, I approach it this way. I say... When you meet uh, uh, an individual that you want to have a date with, and let's say you have four dates, and because you're a gentleman and you're respectful, you pay for it. And let's say for simple math, the average of each date equals 50 bucks. So out of the four dates, you pay a total of $200. At the end of the fourth date, the, the person you're with doesn't think you're, you know, uh, um, a dimwit, you know, doesn't think you're going to, you know, uh, you're a serial killer and decides to, you know, um, uh, give you a little, as they say, on the street. Now, there is no agreement that this is going to turn into a long term relationship. Yeah. There is no discussion that this means anything beyond what it is. Since since you're gambling on whether or not that's actually uh, uh, what's going to happen and, and and completely dismissing the fact that. The, 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 the latter is, uh, you know, uh, prostitution is illegal. How is what I just described any different than meeting somebody and saying, hey, here's a donation for your companionship. Yeah, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We know, we know what's going to happen. You, you understand what's going to happen at the beginning. I mean, granted, it's illegal, but let's just put that to, to yeah. the side for a second. So, so, so how is that different? And, I, and I've ran this by uh, females I know, and, you know, they talk about – morality and this and I said, let's just dismiss all that. If you break it down, um, even on first dates, which I refer to as pre-date interviews, not even a date, and things happen that evening, and you never talk to the person again, what's the difference? I mean, the only thing is you haven't exchanged money to know what the exact purpose of, 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 of the donation, as they say, is. You've simply just, you know, does that make sense, or am I just complete a uh, complete uh, 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 wacko? No, you're not complete wacko. A lot, a lot of um, based on your parameters, I would say that they are they're, they are similar. Mm -hmm. So of course, one being legal, not me personally. I think that it's going to sound crazy, mm -hmm. um, especially some a lot of people in the far right, especially if they're Christian right, that prostitution should be legalized, regulated, and a protected business. Because right now, a lot of prostitutes are on who do their business on the street. Are being taken advantage of pimps and who do have, who can they run to? The cops? They'll just right. get arrested and thrown back on the street with a charge, additional charge on their name. So I think mm -hmm. one, it should be legal and re you know regulated and have protections in place. Um, as crazy as that might sound, some people. But as far as dating goes, that's that that seems to be less. I'd say I have to be less structured than an actual. You just propositioning somebody walking on the street for. 
for for sex, you know, say because that's what they're on street for, that's what comes to boy, that's just more of a, a direct thing. But there are there other similarities, like sure, and there's some women who are gold diggers who play guys all the time and extract all kinds of money out of them. Maybe they give it up to them, maybe they don't. But but in the end, it, it seems seems to be yeah, a lot of similar um, similar attributes. And, and, and so, as you know, uh, a number of, during the midterms, uh, Massachusetts had that referendum. So now marijuana is legal in Massachusetts up to yeah. a certain amount and all that stuff. I have uh, said to friends, and I will say it to, to you and to the folks that are listening, I, within Minnesota, will follow suit um, fairly soon. Now, fairly soon might be two years, four years, six years, but it, it'll, it'll, it'll be – It'll be fairly soon, uh, and it will be taxed and, and provide a, a a revenue to the state the same as it's providing uh, Colorado. Oh yeah, it's going to happen. I mean, the thing is, as soon as the um, and they have already done this, as soon as the corporations got to taste that sweet sweet weed money, <laughs> they uh, they they're, they're going to be they're going to be lobbying and influencing people in elected office to. You know, say, hey, we want to make more of this money. So if you want us to found your campaign, you better uh, ease up off this um, pro you know, marijuana prohibition a little bit. So at least let the medical have most of the people have most of these have their medical then have their recreation within. Of course, kids, it should be. I mean, I mean, I mean, there's a. I mean, really personally, I think all cr- drugs should be decriminalized. That doesn't mean that there, does that mean I think kids should do heroin and shit? No, I just mean it should just be decriminalized and wherever it comes up. It needs to be treated. Should be treated as you know, as as a as an illness. You know what I mean? Uh, or treated as or or disorder. I'm sorry, I should say disorder. But definitely decriminalize all across the board. And if grown ups, 18 and older, want to smoke it or do whatever, and have prescriptions, legal prescriptions to whatever for for whatever health needs or health reasons they may have, then they should do that. But it's it's just a matter of time. And I think personally within uh, 10, 10 years, 10 to 15 years, it's going to be fully legalized throughout the United States as recreational within, you know, of course, having regulations and laws, of course. But some of the last states that will be for the legalization will, of course, mainly be, I think, in the Midwest and the South, because those are the states that tend to be really, really hard on people who smoke marijuana and it's just find any old reason to, to arrest somebody and give them a, another charge in their record for, for, for what they do. So, so it's going to happen. You, so you think the religious belt states will be the? I agree, probably be the be the last to the last to accept it. Hey, you know, I'm smoking if you got them. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's it's. I mean, I had I I've told people I had uncles growing up who had their little garden in the uh, woods and they weren't growing tomato plants. <laughs> um, and it wasn't ditch weed. I mean, it, 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 it was, it was what it was, as I say. But do you think, uh, do you think society has, uh, I'm sorry, the people in general, the average person has an unrealistic expectation of what government can and can, can should and cannot do. Can and should do. Let's put it that way. Can and should do. Well, I mean, it depends what topic you're talking about. Um, like I said, that's why I'm on social issues more libertarian, but on economics I'm more progress more progressive because of the observational and empirical evidence that's been dealt with, or not dealt with, been it's been tried out and uh, looked at. So, if I mean, like, okay, let's it, take, it, the top- take, take the t- case by case. Let's take the topic of uh, uh, reducing the drinking age from 21 to 18. Are you? Would you be in favor of that or not? Um, that I haven't really thought of, but I think for the time being, uh, it because it, people talk about if pe- if kids are 18, they're old enough to serve in the military, then they should be old enough to drink. Um, but at the same time, alcohol really. I'm not. I'm not saying alcohol should be prohibited at all because it's just stupid to do that. But and alcohol does have its problems, and technically, alcohol is a you know, is a poison. And people can't, have died many times of alcohol poisoning. But that that I'm going to be honest and say I'm not really really surf really 
really firm on either way because one, I don't want to inhibit someone's freedom to have have a drink, but at the same time, I don't want to see kids go all of a sudden go like that might make it injured by. I don't know. I don't have any personal test evidence to go on by that, so I can't stop because of that. I can't say either way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question, and we have 18 minutes left, so you have as much time as you need to give give us your opinion. But I will say two words: the caravan. Your opinion, Big Joe? Go. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a circus perpetrated by the I hate to say it perpetrated by the White House to make it sound like it's there's some um, like like make it sound like it's some horrific invasion from the, the the hordes of Hibernia and it's and it's really not they're just people seeking a political or economic asylum and that's perfectly legal like you know it's legal for them to come here apply for asylum ship. Uh, but of course, with this White House, you know, the odds of them, most of them getting asylum ships, would be very, very slim. They'll just be rejected for whatever reason, because Trump is who he is, and his administration is what it is. But really, we should be inviting. Well, not, not letting any old buddy in. We should definitely vet people, have pro- have a strong but efficient process for doing so. But to allow if somebody wants to come apply for be to, for asylum, so be it. Let them apply. Let them be vetted screened and all that then go through the process while they're here maybe have them i don't know pay pay in a little little extra fee for the for them doing so because they are choosing to come here but um so maybe something like that in the end but it but really our country would end up benefiting more because that's more people we have here um contributing to our economy and our economic growth as well as um just adding to the greatness of this country says come one come all and the statue of liberty has that inscription of um give me a tired weak and poor i mean i'm not sure i'm not sure that's the exact quote but it's not something along them lines and really if trump really wants to also get rid of birthright citizenship and you know, can't totally close down the borders you would change the very fundamental nature of what this country was built on and i think that would be a uh, not, not, not a good thing for America. I don't think that anybody disagrees with you on the point that they should apply. But the, the issue is they want to first enter, then apply, which is which is not the process. And that's the issue that most people have. Okay. Because once well, they're here, what are you going to do with them? I mean, you can't, right. I mean, you know, then they scatter. Well, let, let's say they come to the border and they, they can apply there. If that's, mm-hmm. if, that, if that's the legal way to do it, then, then that's the way they got to do it. Yeah. Um, I'm not advocating for people to, to break the law or wanting them to break the law, but quite frankly, for the time being, we as a country have bigger fish to fry, and in the end, we should be focusing on the things and the people, the actual people in power, who are who are who are the ones that actually have the ability to really change things instead of like say, oh, blame it on the on the uh, undocumented people or blame around this group, blame around this group, while those who have a lot of power, money, and influence, they're the ones running the show. And so I like to tell people all t- like to tell people all the time, it's not that I have a problem with America itself. I have a problem with how it's being ran, especially right now with the White House and all that. So it's it's the people running the show that I may have the problem with, not the idea of what America is and what it also could be. So it's it's that's just more or less more or less my position on that. Okay, uh, a couple of final questions for you, which are unrelated to politics or anything. Are you ready? Hopefully, it's it's, it's it's the speed round. Okay, so you're familiar with the Tom Hanks movie Castaway? Uh, a little bit. You stuck on the island for a number of years. Okay, let's pretend that you, Joe, are stuck on it. This is a question that that was found. Well, actually, here's the deal. I had asked this question to uh, a woman by the name of. Kelly back in 1998. So if anybody has claimed that it, it has to have been before 98, but you're stuck on a deserted island for five years. You, you can, you cannot leave. You're allowed three items. You can bring a person, a currently living person, because it would be dumb to bring a dead person. Yeah. An item. The item cannot aid in any rescue. You're stuck there for five years. You can't bring a cell phone or a satellite phone. Sorry. And a book. 
what are your items? Now, I ask this question because this tells, I think, people a lot about the person and how they answer the question. So the item, the person, the book. Uh, do I get to pick the person? <laughs> yeah, you get to pick the person, yeah. Okay, well, I probably want to bring one other person because it would double, I believe it would double my odds for survival and then extra pair of eyes, extra, you know, extra brain as it were to, to, to work out solutions. Um, do you want to indicate who that person is or no? Um, no, you're with him for five years. You might get sick of him. You got to be careful who you choose. Do you know uh, who it is? No, <laughs> it, no. It, it gets mean, tough. It gets tough. Yeah, it, tell me. I'm just saying. Oh, thank do, you you. Have, do you have the person in mind? Maybe if I had a girlfriend, my girlfriend. Okay. So, what item would you bring? Um, I would probably bring something that can light fires easily, such as um, a fire stick to get things going. Okay. Um, like that. What about what book? Book. Um, hmm. I would probably bring a thick old dictionary, so I have a bunch of wadding to burn the paper with and get the fire started. You would burn the books. No, no, no. It's just a thick dick, like a thick, thick old dictionary that has a lot of paper okay. that I can use for wadding. And to use as use as to make the fire with, because I can only read the book so many times for five years. Right. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know the person because I have gone on record to say that I I I like the human race. I just don't like people. Nah. The item I would bring it would be a <coughs> a hatchet of sorts, um, and I think the uh, the book would be. How to survive on a deserted island. That's that's the book. The book I would, I, I would, hope he, I, I would bring. Well, I hope the author is a good author and knows has some experience. I, I hope the person knows what, uh, <laughs> what what they're talking about. Otherwise, I'm uh, as well. But I think the dictionary is a good idea because imagine imagine the the how much your vocabulary would increase. I mean, in in just you would be able to memorize probably. A large percentage of that dictionary within the five years. Granted, you spend you know time each day, and all you got is time. Hey, you learn new words; it never gets old. A new, uh, you know, ten new words every day. How unbelievably boring (laughs) uh, uh, would that be? Um, So, once again, if you could give us your um, little sales pitch, your your Twitch in YouTube and uh, what these folks can expect when they come and visit your channel. Well, again, the uh, Twitch channel is the everyday progressive and it's a channel that's focused mainly on a good deal on politics, but not always. It's an, it's a big tent room. I welcome people from the left and the right center up down libertarians and cappers. It doesn't matter to me. They all are welcome. Don't feel, um, don't feel that I'm going to kick you off for, any old dumb reason that you may offend me. I mean, I mean, get, me getting offended, I kind of like to see who who can possibly offend me. You know, it's, it's almost, almost like a challenge, but um, just because it's something new. But so it's, it's just to show people that who are listening that I'm not, um, you know, reactionary. I'm going to flip out at any old little thing. So feel free, come one, come all. And uh, I usually stream every day at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Usually every day. You know, there's this uh, uh, quote because you talked about offend, uh, being being offended and how you, you wouldn't be. And there's this quote, and it goes along the lines, some along the lines of, um, um, "No one your equal uh, um, would offend you. No one less than you or your unequal could." Or something. I'm probably hacking the the the, the hell out of that, but. Uh, but it's it's somewhat close. No, again, I, I I appreciate you being here. Thank you. I think what you do is 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 interesting. And for me, I, I always define interesting as trying to understand why somebody does what they do. I, again, I think it takes a lot of a lot of um, self confidence to do the th- you know what you and I do. But obviously, it's a different medium. There's not you have the benefit, I think, of the game or the chat to so help with the process. I have the benefit of just, you know, theater of the mind or whatever happens to be wandering through my head. 
at any uh, at, at any at any given point. The one thing that does make me slightly apprehensive about Twitch is um, you know there always seems to be a lot of drama, and and I mean I mentioned uh, the the lyric situation, but I I do kind of increasingly find, and I was doing a little research online, that it kind of seems like to me that the folks who my, some of the folks who migrate to streamers and, and are slightly um, needy of streamers, I, it, it seems just a, the larger ones, it seems a little unhealthy. I mean, I've been in some rooms where they've had 20, 30,000 viewers and people just, um, there's a, there's, there's a little obsession with the streamers or sort of anger if they're not streaming. Cause I'll look at some of their tweets and I'm wondering if, 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 if streamers are kind of taking the place and they're the go-to psychologists for some of these people, which is frightening. I, I mean, I think a lot of people just go there and goof off, try to start stuff. So the drama, this, this is always going to be, in large groups, it's always going to be, always going to be drama uh, with people. Um, as, that's not to be unexpected, I guess. But um, it's that it, it's just another form to go there, screw off, try to you know be a key, be a keyboard warrior, or no, you know, and um. Just go go there, have a good time, and try to go into a room that has a lot of people and see what you can do, what you can make happen. Whether well, that's the mindset of a lot of these people, and it's, it's just a form for them to express themselves and maybe be seen by others, and uh, you know, try to I don't know, start start stuff. And if so, I mean, it's not bad. I don't think it's bad, bad, but it can be seen as some can see it as bad. But it's just for people. It's just for another way for people to uh, have fun with themselves and others. All right, sir. As always, uh, thank you. Um, best of luck to you, and I will be uh, uh, lurking randomly in your channel. I, I, don't, I don't talk. I just like to lurk. <laughs> and uh, maybe one day I'll say hello. Um, I otherwise, I appreciate the conversation, and I thank you. Oh, no problem. I appreciate you having me on. All right. Have a good night.